Governor of California. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, what do you want to see happen in the wake of this assault on the seat of democracy, the place you and your colleagues assembled to carry out the people's business? Well, Matthew, the first thing is that the president has to be removed from office. And uh, this is not just to hold him accountable. Uh, this is to make sure that we have a peaceful transition of power. I mean, here is the central fact. The president was unwilling to order the National Guard. It took Mike Pence ordering the National Guard. We still don't know if it was technically constitutional or not. He just took it in his own hands to do that. Uh, and I don't see after that how you can say that the president should still be there uh, to protect democracy. And the second thing, there has to be some accountability. I had someone tell me today who had voted for Trump two times how embarrassed he was how uh, awful he felt that Trump is there ordering or telling, inciting people to go uh, attack the Capitol. And are we just going to say nothing matters after that? I mean, he should not be president of the United States today. And yet it appears Mike Pence is ducking phone calls from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. They said today they tried to call him but were not connected. Uh, if Pence is trying to run out the clock on the possibility of invoking the 25th, uh, what other option do we have given the Senate's not going to vote for impeachment? As much as we want to see him impeached, as much as we believe he deserves to be impeached, uh, the Senate's not going to vote for it, is it, are they? Well, I think there's a shifting mood in the in the Senate. One option which I've suggested is uh, the Republican leaders can go and tell Trump that he needs to resign. Of course, that's what happened in Nixon's case. It would save him the embarrassment of the impeachment uh, and save the senators the votes. But they should make it clear that if uh, he pushes the, the line, that the votes are uh, votes are there. Uh, and there again, two reasons: it's the accountability to make sure we say to the world that uh, we're not going to tolerate a president who incites. Uh, violence and refuses to have the, it, an acceptance of the peaceful transition of power. Yeah, and of course, when you talk about peaceful transitions of power and what the Trump will or will not accept, I mean, on the one hand, Mitch McConnell is not even welcome at the White House. The idea of a Republican leader going to tell Trump something he doesn't <laughs> want to hear. His wife, Elaine Chow, just quit the cabinet today, the transportation secretary. So I'm not sure that family's welcome around the West Wing. Uh, but Michael Schmidt of the New York Times is reporting today that the president has been openly discussing uh, self-pardoning himself, something that's uh, pretty unprecedented. Does that change the calculus, perhaps, of what should happen in the coming days? I do think it's a concern of who he's going to pardon, including himself, his family, all of the people who uh, have broken uh, laws. And uh, I feel much more comfortable in the judgment of Mike Pence uh, to not have that kind of abuse of, of power. So I definitely think uh, that should be a consideration. And of course, it's a constitutional issue of whether uh, the uh, president can pardon himself. One minor ray of hope in our democracy is you have had Republican appointed justices rebuff Trump, Republican legislatures rebuff Trump, uh, Republican secretaries of state rebuff Trump, and while too late, even Republican senators rebuff Trump. So uh, I can see a post-Trump future where more people suddenly develop some spine to stand up to him. In terms of developing spines to stand up to him, uh, you represent Silicon Valley. Facebook has now banned Donald Trump indefinitely, if belatedly. Uh, Twitter suspended his account only temporarily for a matter of hours. Um, have both companies been completely belated in their responses? And should Twitter follow Facebook's lead now, do you think? I do think it's uh, appropriate to have the in in indefinite suspension. I mean, there should never have been uh, live streaming uh, the uh, rally where Trump is calling for uh, a show of strength, where Giuliani is saying we have to get this done. Uh, and then it's not just Twitter and Facebook, though they have culpability. On Parler, my understanding is you literally had conversation uh, going on uh, with people saying, here's how we get the guns, here's how we have the attack. That's an incitement to violence. Uh, that speech ought to be uh, taken down. And, and to the extent you have uh, a reform of Section 230 and ought to focus on court-ordered speech that violates the Brandenburg standard, that is an incitement to violence. That stuff doesn't belong on social media. One last quick question, Congressman. It's good to see you safe and well. What was it like being in the chamber yesterday as people, armed mobs and extremists, tried to break in? Well, I, I was uh, saddened 
for the country. I mean, I was in Cannon. Uh, we had to evacuate because of the threat of pipe bombs. I was headed towards the Capitol, and then I got frantic texts saying, don't go into the building. It's been overrun. Went back to my office in Cannon, uh, locked the doors, and uh, was there till, till uh, late into the night uh, and until it was all clear. Uh, I, I had a, a, a mix of feelings. On the one hand, I felt uh, what a sad day for uh, our democracy that we have people storming into the Capitol building. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I did see a, a sense of even Mitch McConnell uh, speaking out finally against Trump, uh, a sense that the tide had turned on this man uh, and that we were going to have a, a new chapter in American democracy. It's an ugly chapter, uh, but ultimately I still have faith in our ability to become a multiracial democracy, and uh, we're going to do that, and, and people will yeah. see Trump for what he is.